Hello everyone, we're going to continue our uh, discussion with inheritance and today we're going to talk about uh, uh, protected members a little bit more and uh, some best practice with protected members. We're going to uh, show what it's like to have a chain of inheritance. Um, so when you have fields that are passed down through multiple uh, child objects, so we'll have uh, you know child childs or, or children of children, uh, and then we're going to introduce the object class and how uh, how that works with uh, with Java. So uh, kind of starting off with protected members best practice uh, if we go back to our last demonstration we we just made up a, a silly variable called has roof and and uh, obviously you know marked it as protected uh, access modifier so what that meant was that this variable has roof was accessible um, in the class itself and in uh, children of this class. Now vehicle was the parent class and car extended vehicle which again vehicle being the parent car being the child and because has roof was a protected variable it was inherited and we used it directly in the child uh, class. So here is a variable called has roof, and we were able to access it where we demonstrated hey, number of wheels is another variable, but because it's private in vehicle, you can only use it inside of the vehicle class. You can't use it over here in car. So if I try to say plus num wheels, you're going to see it doesn't recognize, you know, it says it's not visible. Uh, and it says, hey, maybe you can change it to protected. You can get getters and setters and things like that. So it gives you some some options to fix it. Uh, however, so you know that was what we discussed on the last video with protected. Um, however, you know when it comes to best practices, uh, the best practices uh, when dealing with fields specifically are to mark them private and simply use getters and setters. So really when it comes down to what are the best practices uh, for protected members, um, it comes down to don't use them. If you can avoid using them, you can avoid using them. Go ahead and just mark your fields as private, use your normal setters and getters, and you know access your fields through your setters and getters. Uh, that's going to, you know, hide your data as best as possible. It's going to secure your data uh, as best as possible. So what I would do here is I'd go ahead and mark this private, you know, mark that has roof, and, and you can see it still works in the class itself. Over here it starts throwing a fit, uh, in which case we would go ahead and generate a normal getter for has roof and somewhere I uh, created is has roof right because it's going to return true or false uh, so the naming convention is a little strange there a little funny but then we could call over here and we'll call the method which had controls access to our variable and if we if uh, we want to put any logic in here that you know determines helps determine true or false we can do that but uh, so really the best practice is uh, with protected members, uh, avoid them if you can. Use private fields, um, avoid when and where possible. Instead mark fields as private and control access and modification with setters and getters. Um, so that's a little bit of best practice with the protected access modifier. Uh, next topic in line is a chain of inheritance. And um, again, this is just boiling down to code reusability. Um, we might have a scenario where, um, you know, a, a child class is extended. 
and so you now have a chain of inheritance. Uh, in this case, vehicle is the parent, child, uh, car is the child, but what if we had a specific uh, type of car? Maybe um, we could say sedan, right? And, and a sedan is a more specific type of car. So if we demonstrate that by creating a new class and creating a sedan class and by saying sedan extends car. Well, now sedan has the public members that fall down from vehicles. So, you know, sedan will be able to set a vehicle color and get a vehicle color because those are public fields in its grandparent. Uh, if we go into car, car has a make, so we can set a make and get a make. So sedan can also set make and get make um, simply by extending car car extends vehicle we have access to all of those methods and through those methods we have access to the private fields so to demonstrate this sedan you know my sedan equals new sedan and that should work because we're just using the default constructors where we're not passing any data and I'll be able to say my sedan just to demonstrate this, uh, set vehicle color. Again, set vehicle color is a method that has been inherited from the vehicle class through a chain of inheritance, right? So vehicle goes to car, car goes to sedan, and because we create a sedan, we can now set a vehicle color to blue. And it's reusing code, right? We did not have to write all of those methods inside of Sedan. We didn't have to write all of those fields inside of Sedan. All we did was create a Sedan class, an extended car. And because of that, we have access to the more generic methods that are set to public and the fields that are set to protected or public um, from its parents class. Now, um, what a Sedan might have that, that a car doesn't, um, in minimum length, you know, we might have a private field because uh, sedans are, are generally a little bit larger than your typical car, or, or, or um, not maybe not a typical car, but uh, sedans are larger cars. So let's go ahead and create a you know a, a double min length and. Uh, let the uh, user set that just as an example. Um, and I don't even know how long a, a sedan might be, so I, I quickly did a Google search just for the heck of it to see that, uh, uh, you know, 211 inches, according to Google. The luxury models often tend to reach 211 inches, or maybe 100, we can say. A full size sedan, 195 inches. So, just to get an idea of uh, how long it might be. Um, and again, so we've got, anyways, I just wanted to demonstrate now we have a field that's specific to sedans and we can create getters and setters for those fields, uh, generate getters and setters for minimum length. And now our sedan can set a minimum length. Let's say my sedan dot set make my sedan dot set number of wheels my sedan dot set has roof to true. And finally, just to, you know, minimum length is a, is a setter that's unique to sedan. So I think we said 195 inches. Uh, so this set length is, again, is unique to sedan, whereas if I generate a car here, cars do not have a set minimum length. 
because that is a that is a method that's defined in its child inside of sedan. Um, and you know, in chains of inheritance, cars can have um, other children, right? A parent can have multiple children. However, uh, something that is important to remember, and and uh, specifically with Java, um, and I'll just make a note here. A parent can have multiple children, but a child can only have one parent. Okay, so in Java, there's no multiple inheritance as far as uh, classes go. You know, um, you, a child can only have one parent in Java. Okay, and moving on to the last topic in this video is the object class, and uh, this is a really good demonstration of inheritance when I when I'm able to demonstrate this this object class because it it proves uh, that you know uh, inheritance exists and you have been uh, uh, exposed to some of the methods. Um, through inheritance, whether you realized it or not, up until this point, um, when you've been working with Java, and let me let me explain what I'm what I'm talking about here. You know, here going back to the to the vehicle class, uh, vehicle class in our example was the the grandparent, and vehicle did not extend anything, so it was at the top of our hierarchy, it was at the very top. Uh, however, it it wasn't at the top in the sense that there every class that we create if you don't extend if you don't explicitly extend another class like we did with these children there's an implicit extends uh, and the class that it implicitly extends is object and so whether you type this or not on a class every class that you created uh, up until this point and in the future will always implicitly or automatically extend object even if you don't type it and you know you might say okay so what what does that do for me well because we automatically extend object let's see what happens when we instantiate a vehicle I could type V H I C L E vehicle vehicle because there's an automatic inheritance chain that's going on. Look at all of these methods that are object uh, that are available to us that we did not write in vehicle. Now in vehicle we did write some methods. Kind of going back here, we have the number of wheels set number of wheels, we've got constructors, we've got a two string, which by the way, we override. Okay. Now, for example, there's an equals method. Get class. Notify. Notify all. Two string. Now granted we overrid that, but there was a two string method that was automatically there for us um, when we simply instantiate a vehicle. Where do all these methods come from? You know, uh, you maybe never thought about that in the past, but every one of our objects, these methods are coming from uh, the object class. And, and so this object class extends object. You know, this is the, the parent class, uh, the highest class in the hierarchy uh, to, to them all, you know, to all classes. So that's kind of the theory, and that's why we have certain methods available to us, like the two-string method, uh, that if we choose to write a two-string method, we have to overwrite it, which means we have to give it a more specific version in the child. Um, so that is kind of the concept behind the object class. The object class um, is the super class uh, to them all you know the grandparent of all Java classes